The layout of my boat from the front is bedroom, bathroom, office space, living room, dining room and kitchen. And that part of the back there is the semi-trad bit. In the engine bay, stood at the back of the boat. Behind the camera is where I'll be stood when I'm steering. A locker, gas locker, and this is the semi-trad part of the boat. This is this is open. This is where um, people will be sat, watching me steer, and then we'd probably change us to get other people get good at steering. In there is where the kitchen's going to be, and all the living the, the living space. I've noticed on other people's boats, you know, where they've been YouTube in it. And to get to the engine, you can get to it from the inside of the boat itself through a little cubby hole in the bulkhead, which is easier to access for, for service in the engine. You know, I'm imagining now, me being inside the engine bay, I'll be on top of the engine right now, but there'd be a lot of leaning in, leaning over, there'd be, it's quite difficult to get in. And having a hatch in the bulkhead would be a great idea. Fantastic except the point where this engine bay gets filled with water. And of course my steel bulkhead means that no water goes into the cabin. So there's compromises on everything. And, and to be honest, I'd rather have a steel bulkhead where water can't get into, into the boat um, than having a, an inspection hatch to service the engine easier. So I kind of think safety works for me in this instance. And I'm just gonna have to get into some uncomfortable positions when I want to service the engine. Also, I'm having a bilge pump fitted. So if any water gets in the engine bay, uh, the bilge pump will, will bilge it out, will suck it out, whatever it is you do. And there'll also be an alarm fitted to the bottom of the boat, so if, if water gets into the bottom, there will be an alarm woo, 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 that goes off, I don't know how it goes, but um, there will be an alarm that goes off to tell me that um, there's water getting into the engine bay. Good idea. Get me bucket if the bilge pump don't work, but I'm sure it'll be fine. I can visualise so much going on. Smell of the steel. I considered projecting, having a bit of a strategy as to what what type of engine do I need. I considered all electric. You know, if you're going to buy a boat, why not? Why not future-proof it as much as you possibly can? There's advantages to electric. Once you've, once you've fitted it out, well, it's all free. Solar power on the top, charges the batteries, Bobby Dazzler. However, my requirement is to move up and down the canals. And you can only stay in one spot for, for um, 14 days. So let's say for 14 days, there's no sun. How do you get the batteries charged? Now, admittedly, those solar panels will trickle charge the batteries even without any sun, but they won't really give it a proper charge. So you probably have to have a, a, um, a generator 
which would be a diesel or petrol generator, which is like a little engine really. So these solar power boats, I think of a fantastic idea, but now is probably not the right time to invest in solar energy for me, because my requirement is to move up and down the canals. There's no electric points on the side of the canal. And if you've got a generator to charge your batteries, it kind of defeats the object in my head. So unfortunately, I'm still going for diesel. It fits my needs, but it is at a risk. I spoke to someone at Crick who's got one of these um, energy electric boats. And it does appear, having discussed it, that it's a marina boat. I think the concept of those, of those electric boats are absolutely brilliant. Here we are, here we go. Oh, I'm stood behind you on the back of the boat, doing a bit of steering, doing a bit of the old, oh, oh, how's it going, all that sort of malarkey. And I'll shout down into the kitchen, which is just here. I'll make myself a cup of tea. Great. That's using electric power. Plus, I've travelled to get there using electric power. Kids might want the telly on. And I'll do another bit of, of moving about after lunch. It's raining, no sun, no solar, no power. There's nothing on the side of the canal to, to recharge your boat. You're gonna run out of battery power quite quickly. If, if you are living in a marina and you want to do short journeys, um, then, uh, and it's summertime, you've got a greater chance of, of charging your batteries. For me, all year round, diesel, unfortunately, is still the only way. But I did contemplate it. Seven foot Le maximum length of boat 72 foot this boat 66 foot minimum length of the boat where well, there's the Aintree Beetle which comes in at 25 foot all narrow boats are 6 foot 10 wide but that's width end to end usable space on the inside well you know at best, probably six foot. So if you're bigger than six foot and you want to lie down straight, you kind of need to have one of those beds that go lengthways. Some some boats have got a cross bed with the, the, the cross the bed. Benefits of that, of course, is you can get out either side of the bed. You don't have to climb over somebody. It's easier to make the bed, perhaps. But it's not a lot of space on the inside, six foot. 